Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be my eyeshadow palette review for the month of November. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This video is going to be a review of all of the eyeshadow palettes that were new to me in November that I hadn't tried before. And there were uh, one, two, three, four, five, six palettes to begin with anyway. But then I was sent something in BR and I was like, if I put this on like the tail end of everything that I had coming in the past couple months and so with Black Friday on the way, etc., I was like, it's gonna be February until I can try it. And I was super excited for this release. And I was like, some of you were telling me that you wanted to hear my thoughts. I was like, you know what? I'll try to rope it in into my eyeshadow palette review straight away and that's what I did. So I hope you're here for it. Let's get to the review. But before we do that, I have to introduce myself for anyone who might be new here. Hi, my name is Micah. I live in the Netherlands. I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, which means I very, very, very much feel very differently than other creators oftentimes about makeup. I've been reviewing makeup for more than a decade. I love trying eyeshadow palettes Essence and Catrice and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you might be interested in as well, then I hope you would like to consider subscribing and that we'll see each other next time. That would be lovely. So yes, seven instead of six uh, that I had announced in my Shop My Stash. In case you don't know how this channel works, I always do a Shop My Stash at the start of the month and in that video, I always tell you about like video ideas I might be having that I have coming up or upcoming reviews and I always show you what eyeshadow palettes I will be trying this month um, so that you know what m you can expect from this video. Um, and that's, so some of you may have watched that video and go like, oh, but there's extra here. So yeah, I have one extra palette to chat to you about. And up until like some recent purchases, I'm very, I feel I'm pretty sort of good at sort of be like being caught up with what was coming in because the things I'm reviewing here for you today came in at like, like September, early October ish. And then of course, uh, the uh, new palette that was just in. So I feel I'm pretty caught up, which is why I've given myself a little bit of leeway with the sales that were going on last weekend to get some more palettes because I definitely have some more palettes to try. Like January and February are going to be crazy because I've bought a ton of palettes. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm rambling, I'm rambling. I hope you don't mind the ramble, but I just feel like chatting. But the first thing I tried this month is, ooh, let me brighten it a little bit. So we're having really strange weather. It's like sunshine, rain, sunshine, rain. So if the lighting suddenly gets really dark, I do apologize. But the first palette I tried was the Kiko Milano, and I need to say this correctly, this is the Soft Nude Eyeshadow Palette in 01. I think, I believe they have several of these. And this was sent to me as a gift by Esther, who is one of my regular viewers here. And she very kindly let me tag on to her Sydney Grace um, order over the summertime. And then when she sent the products over, she put some extra bits in, and this was one of them. And she sent it to me because I keep saying how I'm not the big biggest fan of Kiko eyeshadow palettes. I love their single formulas, but their eyeshadow palettes, don't quite hit the mark. I've tried a couple over the years, and while they're pretty, there's always something missing for me. And sadly, this palette continues that trend for me, which, you know, just prefacing that already straight off the bat. I don't know if anybody feels the same way I did when I first opened this up, but I had this instant reminder to those old L'Oreal La Palette nude palettes that were around, even like packaging wise, it feels very similar to those L'Oreal palettes that we had a couple of years ago. Um, and also color story wise, this, we had this like rosy toned one here in Europe and the US one was like quite like satin matte heavy. And that's also what this palette is. The name Soft Nude is exactly what you're gonna get. These are not only soft in terms of texture and blendability, but they're also incredibly soft shades. There is nothing here that is overly metallic. So if that's not your cup of tea, then you might actually like this. However, I am someone who likes a bit of variation in the shimmers in my palette. And this is mattes and satins, and it doesn't go anything beyond it. 
um, and very soft satins. Like you can barely tell a difference between the shimmers and the mattes. It's just, there's like practically nothing here. Um, which, you know, if that's your vibe, if that's what you like, it can create a very sort of soft, slightly smoky, but still for perfect for every day, especially if you work in environments where a lot of makeup is just not really the go-to and where that is frowned upon. If you like practice law or anything like that, you sometimes have to be a little bit more careful with what you're putting on your face. Um, um, that of course totally depends on where you live and what you feel comfortable with as well. But if there's a certain kind of dress code, then like what I'm wearing on my lids today will not work for you, but then something like this might. Um, so this definitely has a market. I can definitely see merit in this palette in the fact that I feel the quality is really good as in, you know, these are blendable shades. You can build them up. But I especially feel because we get we get so many light things in here um, that it can feel a little bit chalky. And especially if you have a deeper skin tone than mine, I don't think you're gonna enjoy this because it doesn't have a whole lot of depth. And even the shades that look darker in the pan, I feel don't have the impact to really be able to deepen up shades. Like they're fine on the lower lash line and really build up as liner but to really sort of use them to smoke things out and create depth, I feel it gets a little bit muddy when I tried to do that. And like I mentioned, I was just really lacking a good amount of shimmer. So when I created the looks for this, if you're new here, I always include swatches and looks in these videos as well. You will have seen a couple of them popping up uh, by now, I'm sure as I'm talking, but this palette I had to combine with a single shadow that I still wanted to review. So I paired it with my Emily Luxuriously, no, the Lorex, Liquid Lorex from Lisa Eldridge. Um, and it made for a perfect pairing. So this is a great sort of, I want to set up a look kind of palette for me and then use a more intense either cream or liquid or like eyeshadow stick kind of product to really intensify it. However, um, like I mentioned, I think there are plenty of people who might be able to enjoy this. You get 10 shades. I don't think these are not the most expensive palettes Kiko does. I think these are around the 10 euro mark, but I just feel that for 10 euros, like I just tried the new Essence and Catrice stuff last month and those palettes were all below 10 euros and I felt they were better quality than this. So if this is your jam, I think it might be worth it, especially because Kiko does do sales very regularly. Um, they do like two for two, or they do 25% off different categories a lot of the times, or like 15% off. And if you shop through their website for the first time, you can get a discount as well. So Kiko is a brand where you really don't have to buy full, like pay full price for things. So from that point of view, I think this can still be worth it if this is right for you. However, with everything I have going on in my makeup collection, it's just a little superfluous and it, it's just not gonna stand out from the crowd. If I want like very soft, blendable, easy to use shadows, I'll grab for my K Beauty palettes, which I feel are better quality than this is. It's just, it's just not kind of there for me. Then the second palette I tried this month was the Fighter palette that released over the summertime by Fantasy Cosmetica. I've told you many times before how this is sort of like currently my Pokemon gotta catch them all kind of brand where I want all the things. I haven't bought the Bard and the Sorcerer just yet uh, because I also feel that those color stories aren't necessarily my vibe. And then I just know I'll probably end up decluttering them in the end. However, I really, really like the Fantasy Cosmetica formula. It's one of my favorites. They do a really good balance between mattes and shimmers. I mean, in this palette, we have four mattes and five shimmers. Chef's kiss. I prefer more shimmers than mattes. And they do really interesting shimmers. These aren't your boring metallics that just look foily and like whatever. These have an iridescence to them and a little bit of a flip, but not too much where they become unwearable. I feel with certain multi-chromes that I've tried, because the shift is so intense, 
I feel the only way I can make them look pretty on my eyes is if I just do a very basic, like a bit of bronzer in the crease even, like not even shadow, and then using the multi-chrome. I don't feel that with Fantasy Cosmetica, you need to go that route. These are blendable, these are easy to use, they work really well together, their color stories are incredibly well uh, curated as well. And this may not look like a palette that you might expect me to like, but the minute I spotted this, I wanted to own it because it, it's got a good amount of warmth, but it also has quite a lot of, of cool toneness here as well. And what I have found in my experience with using Fantasy Cosmetica is that even when you try to blend things that may not seem like the obvious choice, it still works which is why I knew I was going to love this. I think I did two or three looks with it. It was again, very successful. This is perhaps not going to be my favorite. I think the Rogue is still my favorite out of the entire bunch uh, because those has the, it just has the blues, the greens and the teals and that's just what I go for. Um, but this is still really stunning. It's like a more neutral take on some of the things that they have to offer and I just think it's a very gorgeous palette um, and I have bought a new Fantasy Cosmetica palette already to try in the future because I just knew when the Warlock was released as well, I was like, if I wanna go a bit more colorful, I can use that. This is the one for my neutral days. I love their aesthetic. I, I really enjoy what they're all about. They are US based. However, the palettes are available on Monolith and the price on Monolith isn't hiked up to account for like all of the shipping and handling fees that they probably have to pay when they stock the brand, um, which is great because I think these are like 45 euros, um, which is pretty much spot on what you would pay for it if you do live in the US. But if you're in the EU and you also have to pay for the shipping and handling fees and all the customs and all that, it would more, more be like a 60 euro palette. So I really feel that if you wait for Monolith to stock the brand um, when they have a restock, it's definitely worth it, but Fantasy Cosmetica does sell out really quickly on there, so you have to be there the day it launches. Just saying. I already men mentioned Esther. I'm being very kind to let me um, tag on to her Sydney Grace order. So um, I bought some Sydney Grace palettes to try. Um, the Heaven, uh, Heaven on Earth was the one I bought and then she threw in an extra love's journey that she had lying about as well. So this was another gift from Esther. And to be quite fair, um, Esther just knows me too well because the Heaven on Earth ended up me being not my favorite of the two, which is why I'm gonna be talking about love's journey second. Um, Heaven on Earth is a really stunning palette. Let me preface it by saying that. It is the lovely Sydney Grace formula that I know I love and appreciate. In terms of single shadow indie brand formula, I think Sydney Grace kills it every time and they are my favorite. Like if you want my recommendation for like single pan eyeshadows that you can curate yourself, Sydney Grace every time. It just, it just works every time for me. Uh, their palettes, however, I feel aren't always the best curated for what I like, however, when they showed this in their, like as a new palette that they were gonna drop for their Christmas in July sale, I was like, that's gonna be right up my street. We get something that's a little bit like, you know, neutrally warm toned, then we get some greens and we get an entire row of blues. Now, here's the reason where why I feel I went a little bit wrong is that I feel I have these shades already in my singles collection from Sydney Grace. <laughs> um, I should have realized that because they do a lot of the things in their palettes that I think I already have as singles because I have a lot of blue, greens, and neutrals from the brand already. That being said, I still really enjoy the quality. The only thing I was a little bit disappointed with is how warm toned this, pool, this pools. It looks like this is going to be warm toned and maybe that might be warm toned, but everything else looks quite cool toned in the pan, but I felt it pulled a lot warmer on me than I had expected. And in the blue section, it looks really nice and grungy and like it's gonna be these like grayish blues. And I felt they pulled very vibrant on my fair skin tone. Um, and I feel that that's a bit of a shame because Sydney Grace is a brand that is I think so far the only brand that caters to both light and deep skinned people by having two options for all of the palettes they release. 
The main difference lies in some of the blending shades and like some of the mattes usually. In the shimmer department, you usually get the same thing. And here's the thing, instead of just doing light and dark, I felt that maybe Sydney Grace can do cool and warm <laughs> because I feel undertone wise, this is very samey samey. Was I able to pull some really stunning looks out of it? For sure, I really enjoyed it. Like I mentioned, the quality is very much on point. But color story wise, like a lot of the other Sydney Grace palettes I've tried in the past, I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't quite t come together. I think my favorite row is the green row. That's a row I will definitely go back to. Um, I just did a look with the neutral row, a look with the green row, and a look of the blue with the blue row to sort of um, uh, play into what this palette obviously has to offer and try every single shade. Um, but I definitely can see myself like pulling in some of these browns here, maybe combining the blues with the greens at some point as well. I can definitely see myself getting more use out of it. It's not that. It's just that once I started trying it, it was a lot darker and it just pulled differently than what I had expected just from looking at it online. So um, if this was a little bit more cool toned in the, especially the greens and the neutrals, then I would have liked it better. It looked a lot more green toned also in the pen and the swatches I feel than when I put it on my eyes. But then the winner of that Sydney Grace order was a palette I didn't even pay for. As I mentioned, Esther again sent me this very kindly. This is Love's Journey. I don't need to keep the sleeves perhaps. Uh, and this is the light version of that palette. Um, so one thing that Cine Grace does is that they also like, whenever they do their Christmas in July sale, you can, can, get, can get a lot of freebies. So I'm expecting that that's how Esther came into this one. And this has more mattes <laughs> than the other one. Um, it only has like two rows of shimmers here. We get a warm toned row, we get a neutral row, and we get a cool toned row. And I think you can see why I like this because this cool tone row is definitely cool toned. These like mauvey grayish plummy grays, they are heaven, they are heaven. So I know that these are magnetic. So now that I'm looking at this as well, like I'm, I'm literally thinking of this on the spot. Come declutter time next spring and I decide to again rearrange some eyeshadow palettes, maybe I should rearrange these and sort of make one more warm toned and one more cool toned. I could definitely do that. This has some topiness in here in the neutral department as well that I also love. Um, and even like these, some of these warmer toned shimmers are incredibly pretty. Like this is a little bit too orange for me. This, this, and this I don't love. But say for those three, this entire palette is just pretty cool toned slash neutral heaven. And I was really loving it. It has the same lovely formula that I know that Sydney Grace can do. I do feel though that this again, like the Kiko, we only get two flavors. We get mattes and we get shimmers. These shimmers all fall into the, um, how should I say it? Like shimmer to metallic quality. They're not quite satins. They're not quite metallic, but they're somewhere in between. So they have a softness to the shimmer. It's not full on foily glass, like shining from heaven kind of level, but it has a subtlety and a sophistication to it that I really appreciate. But that's why I do feel that a lot of the looks tend to look the same because we don't get sort of like an outlier that is like a topper that make, can make things look more sparkly. And so I feel that, you know, we get a lot, a good range of shades in this one, but this would have been greatly helped if it had more of like those like toppery things that Natasha Denona does, or maybe like one thing with a shift like Gloss Got does, where they just have a couple of things that make the palette a little bit more special and elevated. But this, if you want a good neutral palette that really sees you through many different things, that can do a very everyday look, that can do a more smoky look, and that is on the cooler neutral toned level of, uh, of the color spectrum, I would definitely recommend this one. This is a stunning palette. And this is one I had discredited because I have so many neutral palettes already, but it, it just goes to show again, I'm a neutral gal at heart. That's what I enjoy the most. And this one has stolen my heart a little bit. It definitely did. The next palette I tried was one I almost forgot I had. 
not gonna lie, the NYX Ultimate Utopia is one I bought because I was gonna do a full face makeup look with nothing of NYX, which is something I had never done before, to my horror. And I love doing these things with drugstore brands. And this was a palette that when it came out, it had always been like intriguing to me, even though I'm not a, I, I don't really like these big kind of 35 pan kind of palettes. Oh, this is 40 pans even. Um, and it does have a really nasty closure. Like you have to press it down in order to open it. I don't love it. And it feels a bit like cheap plastic. And the reason why I caved is around the time I wanted to do that video in the springtime, I saw Erica Conger talking about this and saying how much she loved it because you get such an array of different shades. And I was like, you know what? For that full face of NYX, I'm just gonna bite the bullet. I'm gonna try it. Um, this is sort of like a combination of all of the Utopia palettes that NYX used to do, or so it seems. Like it seems to have a lot of the same shades. And I think they even did a mini version of this palette that sort of focused on like these nine pans in the middle, kind of. Um, we get cool tones, we get warm tones, we get a sprinkle of color. Um, it goes from light to dark. It is a nice kaleidoscope of color. I ended up doing two or three looks with this, I think, three. Um, with 40 shades, I really struggle to try every single shade in this palette, I'm not gonna lie. I only have two eyelids and so many days in a, in a month where I can try eyeshadow. So after three looks, I also felt like I kinda knew what this palette does. And what it's lacking for me is, is sort of shimmers. It, it just doesn't have really great shimmer quality. And I judge palettes by how good the shimmers are. I'm not gonna lie. Like by now, every brand can do a blendable matte. Like blendable, buildable mattes are like 13 in a dozen. Like you can just find them all everywhere. But it seems to be like, I remember back in like 2014, there was this hype like, oh, this is a really good matte. And I feel that that really incentivized brands to improve their matte formulas. But I feel now they've improved their matte formulas, but the shimmer formulas are sometimes like lagging behind. So I want there to be a movement where we improve our shimmer quality. Can we make that happen? Um, because this, as lovely as it looks, it just isn't quite for me. That's how I'm going to put it. I definitely wanted to do a look with some of these like taupey teals in this corner here. They look really stunning, but the taupe shimmer pulls blue. Like, it's not even a flash. It just has a blue undertone, which is not expected because you don't see it in the pan. And it only showed up when I applied it with fingers. Um, then we have like those teals. Those are nice. But I felt that this teal was just a little bit weak, like the matte here. It just didn't really have the depth that it looked it was going to have in the pan. And that's how I kind of feel about this entire palette. The shades don't do on my lids what I expect them to do when I try them on my lids. Where was I? Because the doorbell uh, rang and uh, I was telling you about the NYX and I was almost done talking about it. Oh yeah, I was saying how I felt that the shades on my lids always pulled a little bit differently from what I had expected when I just look at it in the pan. So I tried doing a look here with some of those sagey greens and uh, like some of the neutrals that are there, like make a nice sagey green look. And I felt that wasn't that, like that successful. And then I tried to go in and like find a darker shade that would go with it to like use a bit of liner. But I, then I felt that there wasn't anything that really went with these lighter tone greens because there isn't a single dark green in the palette. We do get a million different colors of brown, most of them warm toned, which is why I kind of felt that there wasn't enough here to really appease me personally. The third look I did, of course, I had to go in with that green here in the middle. Um, that was a very pretty shade as well, but it just felt overall, like I think this is, I think, like I definitely see merit in a palette like this. If you're someone who is, you know, starting off with makeup and you just want a bunch of shades to play around with it and have fun, I think this is a really nice palette for people who are looking for that. This very much reminds me of the experience I used to have back, back in the day when I had a couple of these larger like coastal sense like palettes 
that just really allow me to play with things and to figure out what colors look nice on me. But I know what I like and I know what I, what I go in for and what I reach for most. And upon like scrutinizing this palette a little bit further now that I've tried it, I just kind of feel that there are too many shades in here I wouldn't reach for again, especially in the lower half of the palette. I feel it just gets to too many warm tones and there aren't enough deeper shades in the cool tone section um, to really make those kind of looks work. Um, essentially, we just have these two grays here and everything else is warm. So, because this, this one looks cool tone, but it has a green undertone. Um, this is just the black, which is not a color. Um, this, this is too plum to really go with this or with those greens. So, a cool tone brown, like a really nice, like, coffee, cool tone brown shade is, in my opinion, what this palette lacks. Because there just isn't anything really to bridge that gap. Um, so there's just too many mid-tones, too many light shades, and there isn't enough here to really create interest, and the shades that look like they might be deep enough kind of blend away into nothing. That's how I feel. So this next palette is incredibly shiny, so I do apologize if I happen to blind you, but it's the Smoky Glam palette from Bella Beauté Bar. And this is a new-to-me brand. This is the first time that I tried them. And I can definitely see why a lot of people are liking this, this brand so much. However, they are sort of becoming one of those indie brands, just like Unearthly, that just churn out new, new, new. That just makes me wonder, like, do you even have time to keep track of your older releases? Um, because they, they have yet again announced a new palette this past week alone. I'm like, this came out in May, I think? Um, and it's available on Monolith, which is where I purchased it. I bought it together with the Fighter palette, and together that gave me free shipping, so that was great. And I had to wait a little bit for this palette to finally be shipped, but this is the color story. Now, I just told you I don't love really big palettes because with big palettes like this and also with the NYX, I feel there are always going to be shades I won't use. So yet again, here as well, uh, we get 36 shades and 36 shades where I did three or four looks. I think I did four looks with this one. So yet again, I have not been able to use every single shade that's in this, which is usually my aim with these videos, but it's just too big. And I ran out of shimmers. <laughs> I ran out of shimmers to use. This is a very matte heavy palette. And even though the shimmers are lovely, I could have done with a purple shimmer in here. The only purple shimmer we get is incredibly dark. Uh, it would have been nice if there was a true purple shimmer instead of like this duochrome, like blue, pink, purple, flippy kind of thing. Um, something that goes more like this, like a more like a true color purple um, because then you could have made a power like a purple look but now you just have like this is the only purple we get um which is quite matte heavy I'm not mad about it at all um but that's just something that I wanted to point out we get a couple of warm bits here in the peachy tones at the top didn't love that this is quite warm toned but everything else in this palette is is cool like it's it's a cool tone palette like 90% of it is cool toned, which I love. Um, I started this palette with a pink look because we get some brighter pinks and I'm not a fan of pink eyeshadow because it usually makes it look like I've got pink eye. But these are cool, cool tone pinks. They're purpley leaning pinks. This is incredibly blue toned. This leans towards those purples which was stunning. I also pulled in quite a few of the shimmers that we have up top here, which was also incredibly stunning. Um, so yes, I think I used these two, this one and this one for that first look, and then these three mattes, if I remember correctly. Um, and I might've used like this very light baby pink to blend some things out but it was stunning, it was really, really nice. But here's the reason why I'm saying we need more shimmers in this palette, because we get different shimmer formulas in here. And one of the shimmer formulas I do not like. And it's the one that we get in this and also in here, especially here at the top, we have flaky shimmers. And I don't mind a flaky shimmer, I really don't. But if they are flaky to the point where I cannot pick them up with a brush, 
I'm usually not a huge fan. Um, you guys know that about me. Uh, you need fingers with some of these shimmers to make them work. And which, you know, in itself, that's not a bad thing, but my fingers cannot do detailed work and I don't have tons of lid space. It looks like I have a lot of lid space right now because for once I was able to like blend my eyeshadow up high enough. Um, but very often fingers, like it's just too much, um, like ground that they cover and I need a little bit more like the ability to use more detail often. Um, so that's why I'm like, mm, it's a little flaky at times and it doesn't really work with a brush. Um, but once you get there, they are incredibly foily and shimmery and super impactful. Um, not your everyday thing. It's definitely a smoky glam palette for a reason. Um, the second thing I did was something with the greens down here, which I really enjoyed. They're nicely grayish, grungy greens. Loved it. And then I tried to do a look with some of these like taupey mauve things in this like quadrant right here. And then I started to realize, and this again brings me back to the point, we need more shimmers. Um, whether you use this shimmer, this shimmer, this shimmer, this shimmer, or this shimmer, or this shimmer even, they all look silver. It's like five of the shimmers that we get in the palette. There's so little difference in the undertone between them that if they really feel interchangeable. In the pan, it looks like, you know, this is like this shade, but this is a little bit more gray leaning and this is a little bit more pink plum leaning. On the eyes, I saw barely any difference. It just, I tried to layer them together and you it just looked like one shade, which, hmm. This green shade as well, it just looks like a silver. Um, and we get an actual like true silver. We get something that's a little bit more pewter leaning and something that's more like a true silver in here. Um, but they all like, because they are so incredibly impactful and vibrant in the like reflect that they have, the undertone doesn't have enough room to play into the eye look and really make it stand out. So as much as I like the quality of this, because the mattes are stunning and blendable and the shimmers are super impactful, remember what I said before, I judge a palette by its shimmer quality. And if these shimmers, because out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, out of a 36 pan palette, we only get 11 shimmers. I'm not counting this black with sparkle, it doesn't count. And then to have five shades that are, that are essentially the same thing. And it could be that because I have fair skin that these don't, that these undertones don't show up, that maybe if you have deeper skin, that they do show up. Will I go back to this palette? Will I use it again? Yes, because of the quality. And because in terms of like having everything you want from a cool tone palette that isn't super neutral and a little bit more interesting, like this palette is what I want other brands to also play with because so often cool tone palettes are just a bunch of gray tones and maybe a blue. But this palette is really trying to play with, you know, having those pinks in there and a bit of mauve and plum and those greens. So I feel it definitely does a little bit more. It definitely feels like an elevated cool tone color story. But I just felt that the shimmers, especially in this bottom half of the palette, were just a little too samey samey and that just knocks it down for me for like truly being a super like top top favorite palette. Um, because I just, I just want shimmers that when I put them on my lids, it actually looks like I've used another sh uh, shimmer from the other ones I've already used. Um, and I felt that wasn't the case with this one, sadly. And finally, last but not least, what is on my eyes today? And it's of course the new in Dragon Eye Palette from What's Up Beauty. Um, this was sent to me in, in PR, full disclaimer. And the brand was kind enough to even uh, send this to me via expedited shipping so that I would have it in the day it launched. It launched last week, um, just a week ago, and I did post it on my community tab. So maybe you've seen that post already as well. 
that I had this in and that I was going to try it. So I'm super grateful for the brand to be sending this to me. Um, and also what's up beauty for the people who are in the EU, they are stocked on monolith as well. So that's another perk here as well. So I love it when I can find us indie brands on monolith. Now i now that I've discovered them and tried them, I'm like, yes, that's going to be my go-to. I'll just wait until it drops on monolith. Um, and this, this is what the color story looks like. Um, it is, um, five mattes, seven shimmers, and the shimmers have a flip. They all have a flip. They call them multi-chromes, but I feel that a multi-chrome is where you have like more than one flip. And I feel that these are more on the duochrome side of a multi-chrome. You know what I mean? You know where it's like borderline? Um, they are incredibly stunning. It is one of the looks I'm wearing today. I created with this palette. And before I sat down to film this video, I did create the look with the other side of the palette as well. So the first look I did was with this side of the palette and what's on my eyes today are these six shades on this side of the palette. We have something that's a little bit more cool toned, something that's a little bit more warm toned here. But even as far as warm tones go, I definitely feel that these two greens here could also work really well with the plummy things. And like, for instance, this like neutral brown, like cooler tone brown here as well. Um, this is also slightly more cool tone. So what I ended up doing for the first look is that I used this in the crease, blended it out with a little bit of the peach to create some of that warmth. And then I used this together with this to create a little bit of a halo eye. So this shade is on the inner and outer corner. And then this is what's in the middle. That's that vibrant pop. And this, it looks blue in the pan, but it's got that sort of like blue, green, purple vibe to it. So as I was applying the shade in the one uh, corner of my eye, it looked purple. And on the other side of my eye, it looked a little bit more tealy green, which I thought was really fun. This is like a green to gold kind of shade, but because it's incredibly vibrant, I feel we lose the flip just a little bit and just it just looks like a green with a slightly yellow undertone to me. Um, could also be my incredibly fair skin again that maybe if you have deeper skin, the flip might be a little bit more obvious. This white isn't just a straight up white. It has a slightly blue tone to it as well, which makes it go with all of the shades really nicely. I sometimes feel in palettes with multi-chromes and duochromes in that some of the lighter shades are then, they then have a flip that I feel throws off the entire palette, but it's not the case here. Um, and then this was a really stunning, more warm toned flip where it's like a, like, you know, those, um, sort of like oil slicky kind of shades, but then like the, you know, the not blue brown, but like green brown sort of vibe of it. So it's got this like murky brownish tone and then with the green. So again, I feel it can also go with some of these like browns that it has in here really nicely. The peach is like the only thing that I feel really makes this half of the palette feel a bit more warm toned. But overall, I think you can really mix and match these as well. And then of course, we get some purples and a cool tone brown with some nicely like purpley toned multi-chromes here as well. And then this one nicely bridges the gap between some of the warmer things in here and the cool tones, because this is like that sort of like pink peach to like a purple kind of thing. So it sort of has a bit of both worlds. Um, that one is on my lower lash line, which from this distance you can probably not see, which is why I've inserted the, um, the close up, of course, together with a little bit of the cool tone brown, because I wanted to make sure the lid was very purple heavy. The only shade on my lid that is shimmery is this one. It looks like I'm wearing three shades. It's not. <laughs> I just use this in the crease, use this in the outer V to create a bit of a smoky shape. And then I just topped it all like over it with this. And I used my fingers to intensify. And then I made a bit of a boo-boo because uh, this has a little bit more of a transparent base to it than this one does. This is more of like a true purple. It has a true purple undertone to it. Um, and that's what's in my inner corner. It works, but I think if I had flipped it around that this might be better as an inner corner highlight shade overall than this one is because it has a little bit more pigmentation to it but I think this is a really nice and fun shade. You can definitely build it up. Um, I use it with a brush first and then with my fingers. The only shade I struggled with with a brush was this shade. 
Um, this really needed a finger to go on nicely. With a brush, it looked completely sheer. And I feel that this one and this one together have a bit of a transparent base. So those could also nicely be topped over some of the mattes, I feel. Um, so in terms of what this palette has to offer, it's very complete. It's only 12 shades. You get stunning mattes. Like, I mean, look at that blend of those purples. Like purple can be such a difficult shade to get right in makeup and they just nailed it. And I knew I already liked the What's Up Beauty formula. They've sent their other palettes to me in the past and I like those as well. So that's why when they asked me if I wanted to receive this in PR, I told them, yes, please send me the new palette. And I, I'm, I'm a little bit in love because I have I have tried other palettes that have multi-chromes in, um, things like uh, Dept and you know some other brands as well. And then very often I feel that the multi-chromes don't really come together. And with this, I just feel it works really well. There's a really good blend of both mattes and shimmers that you can create plenty of looks. Um, the neutral, like the mattes you get are really nice building blocks that really make those shimmer shine. So I think Thoughts of Beauty did a very good job with this one and I really enjoyed playing around with this for sure. I do think that if you are a beginner with makeup, this formula may be a little bit difficult to work with if you really wanna try the shimmers. The mattes blend themselves. Those are very soft. You do get a little bit of kick up in the pan, um, but they're very blendable, but especially the shimmers, they are a little bit sparkly almost. So you do need to be very careful that you tap off your brush so you don't get fallout with these, I find. Um, but overall, they have a stunning quality. And I do feel that once it's on your eyes, it doesn't like fall down and create fallout throughout the day if that's something you're not a fan of either. So yeah, really stunning, really pretty eyeshadow palette. And I'm very glad I got to try this. That's it, you guys. Those were all of the palettes that I tried for you in the month of November. I really hoped you enjoyed watching this video today. Uh, thumbs it up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more by me. I'll have another eyeshadow eyeshadow palette review for you in December. However, December is also going to be the month where between Christmas and New Year's, I'll give you a roundup of all of the products I tried. And then I'm co of course also going to be doing an eyeshadow palette related video where I tell you about all of my favorite eyeshadow palettes that I tried this year. And there are definitely a couple of contenders in this roundup today that I think might have to make it in my top 10 or top 15 of the year for sure. So I hope you really enjoyed watching this video. Thumbs it up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos every single week and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye-bye.